Hello everyone, I'm Mike D'Angelo with That's Entertainment, and this is your video review of Zack and Wiki, Quest for Barbarossa's Treasure, by Capcom. The graphic adventure genre has been running stale for a long while. It clearly feeds into a niche group, and one that seems to become narrower every year. That was why it was surprising to hear that Capcom was taking a risk by releasing its own quirky adventure title, Zack and Wiki. Traditionally, graphic adventures have been made by the Western market. It's those commonplace franchises like Monkey Island and Myst that have put the genre on the map. Zack and Wiki practically bleeds Eastern influence, from the characters in the game to the vocal work and the visual style. On top of that, the game is exclusively on a niche system, the Nintendo Wii. All things considered, was this game doomed from the start? Zack and Wiki pulls no punches with the introduction of the title. You're immediately thrust into the action, taking the role of Zack, an aspiring sky pirate, on the lookout for whatever treasure he can find. Traveling with him is his ridiculously adorable magical flying monkey sidekick, Wiki. After being accosted by another pirate, Rose, the duo land upon a discreet island where they happen upon the final big player in the narrative, the dismembered head of the legendary pirate Barbaros. In return for helping him to piece all of his body parts back together, he promises you his greatest treasure, his ship. Throughout the story, you toil with wildlife, candle tribesmen, and Rose's foolish pirates, all while looking for one more piece of Barbarossa's gilded skeleton. The game is quirky throughout, each body part sequestered in its own level that requires a new train of thought to work through. Whereas traditional graphic adventure games required you to point and click, Zack and Wiki rely on the Wii's interesting control scheme. Nintendo's newest system wasn't even a year old yet. Capcom's interesting title sure put the Wii's controls to the test. Wiki has the special power to ring like a bell, and the tune that he emits has the ability to transform creatures into tools that help Zack perform basic functions. Need help hacking through a series of branches? Why not turn a menacing looking centipede into a common saw? If you're having trouble reaching an object, just turn a snake into a grabber tool. The real spark of ingenuity for Zack and Wiki is in the way you use the items. With the Wii controller held like you would hold the actual items, you twist, turn, shake, and take aim, performing all kinds of ridiculously silly functions. The best part is that the game can be fun for a large variety of gamers, thanks to the hint system that it uses. Throughout all the stages, you can find coins scattered about. With them, you can buy platinum tickets, which allow you to continue if you make a mistake, or you can purchase oracle dolls, which give you a hint. Everything is used at the player's discretion. Zack and Wiki is a good looking game. It may not scream next gen when your eyes first hit it, but it is aesthetically pleasing. It almost has a cell shaded or watercolor look to it. Any way you shake it, it looks good. The music isn't all that inspiring, except for some high tension portions of the game, and some of the sounds do begin to grate on your nerves, but other than that, you get a fairly typical graphic adventure game. Except for the vocal work. As said before, it has tremendous eastern influence. Zack, Wiki, and all the supporting characters have very distinct anime-style voices, even if they aren't entirely discernible in any language. Depending on your predisposition, this can either be a laughable addition or incredibly annoying. Since the game tracks your score, you can always go back into levels to see if you can find a smarter, quicker way to finish the task at hand. You have plenty of opportunities to notice subtle mistakes you're making that embellish the difficulty of your mission, and emitting something simple might make all the difference. There are also several nods towards other Capcom franchises, most notably when you come across a ghastly composer who knows of Barbaros. Unfortunately, the music-based minigame that follows upon meeting him ultimately flubs up more often than not. It's a very bleak spot on an otherwise great game. If it weren't for how difficult it was to implement and then utilize some of the control schemes in this game, it would have been the sleeper hit of 2007. As it stands though, it was just a jumping point for a series with potential. Unfortunately, like a lot of impressive Wii software, this one was painfully overlooked. If you have a Wii and you haven't tried this yet, you owe it to yourself. It really is a good game. That's Entertainment Award Zack and Wiki, Quest for Barbarossa's Treasure, a score of 8 out of 10.